Now we tend to use the kilogram to measure the mass of everyday objects around us. We tend to use the joule to look at energy and then we measure length in meters. But that's not always appropriate if we have really small or really big quantities. So let's have a look at mass first of all. So although we normally measure mass in kilograms, if we've got things which are particularly small, like protons and neutrons, we can also use something called the atomic mass unit. This has a symbol lowercase u, and this is the average mass of protons and neutrons in a carbon-12 atom. So this is going to be our standard thing that we can use when we're looking at the really small kind of subatomic particle scale. But of course, sometimes we want to look at really big things. Uh, another way we can measure mass might be in solar masses. So I'm just going to use a capital M, and I've got a circle with a dot in it to represent our sun. So for example, if there was another star somewhere else in our galaxy which had a mass of 0.7 solar masses, we could tell instantly that that's smaller than our sun, or there might be a star that's got a mass of 200 solar masses, so we know it's 200 times the mass of our sun. So these are just different units that we can use to measure a normal quantity like mass. When it comes to energy, normally we use joules, but of course if we've got things which are really small, like tiny particles moving, we can actually use something called an electron volt. And this is where um, if you have, for example, a potential difference of one volt and you have an electron accelerated by that potential difference, it's going to increase its speed, it's going to gain energy until it has one electron volt of energy. But sometimes we have lots of energy, for example, the energy supplied to your school, an office, to your home. And this is where we might use something like a kilowatt hour to represent large quantities of energy where a kilowatt hour would be the energy transferred by a thousand watt appliance in one hour. And of course, when it comes to length, some of these you'll be quite familiar with. Of course, when we normally use the standard unit of the meter, but if you're going somewhere, maybe driving somewhere from place to place, you might be more used to using miles to talk about these big distances. Of course, if we have really big distances, we might use something like the AU, which is the astronomical unit. That's the average distance between the Earth and the Sun. We might use things like light years, which you might be familiar with from TV, but also, we also sometimes use a parsec, which isn't always uh, talked about. So these are just different ways of measuring distances at a large scale. Now to convert from joules to electron volts, we need to first of all think about the equation that says E is equal to QV. And if you had um, a charge multiplied by a certain potential difference, that would tell you the energy that it's gained. Now the charge on an individual electron is equal to 1.60 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs. And if we accelerated one electron by one volt, we'd multiply this by the accelerating PD of 1.00, which means that one electron volt is the equivalent to 1.60 times 10 to the minus 19 joules. So an incredibly small number. When it comes to looking at kilowatt hours, we know of course that energy is equal to power times time, and the power for a kilowatt hour would be a thousand watts. And we're going to multiply that, that by the time in seconds, our standard SI unit, which would be 60 minutes times 60 seconds in one hour and that means that one kilowatt hour is the same as three million six hundred thousand joules so we've got an incredibly large amount of energy in one kilowatt hour so this just really highlights the fact that in physics although we have our standard si units we also have plenty of other units which are equivalent but often more suitable for really really small things and really, really large things. By the way, this is just one of many videos I've made covering all of the maths that you need to understand for A-level physics. It's part of a mini course, which includes many more topic videos, multiple worked examples, and also a guide that you can download. You can find all of this over at alevelphysicsonline.com.